the, the beauty of today's technology is like, look at what we're doing. We're doing a video Zoom meeting and right. business is continuing to go. It, it only stops if you choose to stop because opportunity is still there. Like-minded people like you and I are connecting right now in the midst of this crisis. And you have all of the tools to be able to communicate. And at the end of the day, whether you're in real estate or you're in mortgage, at the core of what we do, we get paid to communicate with people. That's it. And I'm just looking to keep my finger on the pulse of what's happening in the market so that I can go back to communicating with my business partners and my clients to educate them on what I know and what I see. Because that's what yep. this is all about. We're expert advisors. We're communicators. So we need to get that message out and share this news and share this positivity with the world. Like, be a leader. Welcome to Business Insights with Matt Milia. I'm your host, Matt Milia. And in this podcast, we'll talk about the real, raw, uncut business success secrets you won't find anywhere else. Follow my journey from entry level to CEO. We discuss real actionable items you can plug into your business right away. To subscribe to our weekly top tips, you can go to www.mattpodcast.com and join our community of elite high-level performers. And if you're interested in our inside sales company, you can go to www.appointmentstoday.com to jump on a free strategy call. And now, stay tuned for our podcast. Hey guys, I appreciate everyone that's watching. Uh, this is actually my first Facebook Zoom, so I'm pretty excited to uh, try out a different program. But I'm the most excited to have Jeff Van Nostren, who's with us here uh, from Movement Mortgage. And Jeff, thank you so much for, uh, for jumping on and joining us. And uh, for everyone who doesn't know you, why don't you give everybody just a kind of a quick background on you, share a little bit about, uh, about yourself. Sure. Well, I grew up in the Pacific Northwest. I grew up in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, I left Vancouver to attend the University of Washington in Seattle. I put down roots there and lived uh, my adult life in Seattle. And then in July of last year, my family and I moved to Southern California to get closer to my wife's parents who are retired and wanted to help us with our uh, two and four year old daughters. Okay. Nice, nice. So you, uh, you've been now in mortgage. How many years have you been? Gosh, it's close to getting close to fifteen years now. Wow. So you you've been through it all, to say the least. Uh, I mean, it, it, I've seen a lot. I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't go as far as saying I've seen it all, but uh, you know, that's one of the things that's most exciting about the business is that it keeps you on your toes. Like there, no day is the same, and there's always something going on, and you just gotta stay in tune with the market and, and keep at the top of your game. No, totally get it. Well, and it, it's definitely now is the, uh, now is the perfect time to, uh, to pivot and, you know, continuously add as much value as you can get back to the community. And of course, continue to stay the course. Um, with that being in mind, I mean, you've, you've been now in the top 1% for a lot of years from just the discussions we've had watching, working with your team has been pretty amazing. Uh, it's funny because I even put in there working with your staff. It's like you guys have, you know, you have four people, but it's like you have 44 people. Uh, you guys are constantly and consistently grinding away. What would you say for you is kind of like your day to day routine and how do you stay you know, on top of your game, especially even during a downward time? For sure. Well, I mean, daily routine is kind of uh, uprooted right now because of these unprecedented times. Uh, the two and four year old daughters usually go to school each day and uh, we have full time coverage for that. So that allows my wife, who's a recruiter and me in the mortgage industry to do what we do. Uh, but the daily routine has changed as so many people's daily routine has changed. And I think that, uh, you know, it's just waking up happy to be alive uh honestly like just to put things in perspective i think there's a lot of doom and gloom out there and i think people are are scared they're they're frozen with fear there's a lot of negativity that comes from media there's a lot of negativity and in infighting on social media amongst friends and family and i think you know what i would love to share with everybody is just 
use this use this virus situation as an opportunity to hit the reset button and identify really what's important in your life. What what's most important? You know, is it is it having health? Is it is it family? Is it friends? Is it quality time with those people? Because I think some of the perspective that people should have is if if you're on your deathbed, uh, not to be morbid, but with this virus, there are people that are dying, right? And so if any one of us is on our deathbed and in the last 24 hours, 48 hours, one week, two weeks, if the last things we were doing with our days on this earth were worrying about the virus and getting frozen by fear and worrying about money and losing our, our, our tangible goods and our toys and all that stuff. Like, no, that's not, that stuff's not important. And this virus situation is very humbling because it's equal opportunity. It is after every one of us human beings, whether you're wealthy, whether you're poor, whether you're black, you're white, you're yellow, you're red, you're green, it, it knows no boundaries. And so I really just see this as an opportunity to reset in life to say, look, I, I'm happy to be alive every day and I'm going to count my blessings. One of the things that my family and I try and do as a daily routine is when we sit down for dinner each night, we go around the table and we say what we're thankful for. And when we talk about daily routine, like it's powerful. It's something to many people that might be silly, but it's really, really impactful. And I love that we're instilling that as a daily routine for our children, because I, I want to lead by example. And I think that there's so much more to life than the, the chaos and the nonsense and the economics and the, and the goods and, and the toys and cars and the houses and the celebrities and the movies and the sports and all that stuff. And I look at me, I'm wearing a Seahawks. I'm a diehard. I, I'm one of the biggest sports fans you've ever seen. Um, but it's still an opportunity to say, man, as much as I love those games, as much as I love going to football and, and basketball and hockey and baseball games with thousands of other people, it is just a game. It's just a game. Super entertaining, but it's just a game. Yeah. So true. And I want to circle back. I think one of the most impactful things that you just said, and I love the fact because being that you're, you're leading as example, as an example, as a leader of your family, you got, you got your kids, you got wife, everyone's around the table and you guys are going around expressing the expression of an attitude of gratitude. I absolutely love that because now we can all focus on what's, what's wrong in life. It's easy to allow the media to negatively impact you. It's easy to allow your focus to be diverted. And one of the things, and you said you like sports, it's funny because I was telling my wife earlier today, we were talking and we're, you know, as an inside sales company, I mean, we're still setting a lot of appointments for the agents that we have, but we're just changing the marketing medium. We're using Zoom. Uh, we're using, you know, I've got agents using Skype meeting with their uh, meeting with prospects. I have literally homes being sold without even meeting them in person where they're getting, you know, they're getting the everything dialed in. They're getting things done from a virtual standpoint, but being grateful during this time and going back to the sports reference, when I, when I was in high school, I remember I played football. I was not, I was, I was a smaller guy. I wasn't fast enough to be a running back. And I wasn't tall enough to be a receiver. So they put me on like, I did pretty well on the defensive side of the ball. And then they put me in uh, my, my favorite position was defensive end. So I really enjoyed football. But the one thing the coach said that on the off season, he goes, listen, you guys should be doing some off season sports or else you're going to get out of shape. You, you worked hard to get where you are right now. You put your best foot forward every day to get to the level of where you are in life. And I'll never forget it. I like, all right, I'm going to run track. And I hated track. I didn't want to run track, but I knew I needed to do something to keep myself in good shape. So I ended up signing up for the mile and I'll never forget this. I started off first place. I was literally, a, I was a full quarter mile in and I had a good hundred meters of distance from like the second place person. I'm like, 
this is easy. I must be just like a, a natural champion at this. Well, I started to suck a lot of wind in by the time I got, by the time I got through about not even a lap and a, a half, I literally got to a point where I couldn't even breathe. I slowed down almost to practically a walk jog. It ended up where I got lapped uh, by the fastest guy and I ended up finishing 40 seconds dead last. And why I felt like that was relevant today is because what I feel like a lot of people are doing with their business is they're stopping completely. Let me stop. Let me, let me focus on all the other things around me and we're going to recover. We're going to get back from this. I still personally, and I'd love your take on this because I know you were in the financial crisis. I don't believe that we are in the financial meltdown like we were in 2008, 2009. I don't believe it's the same. I think wow. that this is a massive temporary setback, but we all are going to still get through it. It's just, what are you doing during this time to double down? What are your thoughts? 100%. I mean, it's a financial crisis to the extent that there are a lot of people that are going to lose jobs and they're going to be furloughed and they're going to be laid off. And that impacts those people, their families, their personal budget. It does affect finances, right? So I don't want to take anything away from that. But what you're saying is absolutely true that this isn't a, this isn't a housing crisis. This isn't a financial crisis at its core. This is a medical crisis. This is a science thing. You know, it's a virus that's causing all of this, right? So keep it in perspective that when we get past this, when science is able to overcome, when we get treatments, when we find a vaccine, uh, using these social distancing methods, we can slow the spread of the virus down, save a lot of lives. Like health and life is the most important thing of all it, like if we're not alive then what, if we're not here right so like all the other stuff all the other like oh do i have enough toilet paper do i have enough hand sanitizer like need to run back out to the store and, and hoard this stuff like no the fact that you can roll out of bed and feel you know your heart beating and open up a window or walk outside and hear birds chirping and just take in nature and your surroundings, like be happy to be alive. Right. So this is not, uh, this is a temporary setback. We're going to come back from this and we're going to be better for it. And I think for all the business owners that are listening, whether you're in the mortgage industry, whether you're in the real estate industry, maybe, maybe you're in some other industry outside of those places, things will turn around and it's going to get better. And if you stay the course, if you buckle down and you stay focused and you stay energized and you stay positive, there's a lot of opportunity coming out of this stuff. And I'm, I'm a sports guy. I'm a team sports guy. I played all the sports growing up and now I'm a fan in adulthood. And I love using the sports analogies, but I, I like to win. I, I can't stand to lose. I cannot stand to lose, right? I want to win almost at all costs. Never never doing anything unscrupulous, but, but playing within the rules and then being the best of the best within those rules, right? And I want to compete for championships, you know, to use the football analogy. I want to compete for titles. I want to go and win a Super Bowl every single year in this business. I want to go and compete in the Super Bowl. I want to be the Patriots in mortgage lending where you just year in and year out, they're just back. They're winning double digit games. They're getting home field advantage and they're winning lots of Super Bowls. That's what I aspire for in my mortgage business. And I try and share this vision and share this excitement with my team so that they take on the same attitude and have the same outlook that I do. And I would just encourage everybody to use this opportunity, not just as a reset for what the priorities are in your life and what's most important to you, but in business to use this as an opportunity to stay grounded and really establish solid fundamentals that you can lean on to come out of this medical crisis. Because this is going to separate the men from the boys, like not, not to just using that as a saying, right? Like not to be sure. sexy or anything, but these trying times are big differentiators for who's going to come out of this as a winner and who's going to come out of it as a loser. And if you allow the negativity and the fear 
to grip you and take hold of your life, you're not going to win those titles, right? And if you take the other side of the coin and you're staying positive, you're establishing good daily routine, you're inspiring your team members, you're inspiring your clients, you're being the light to people around you in a world of darkness, you're going to shine. You're going to shine through and you're going to win, right? So I would encourage everybody to really identify what you can do and who can you partner with. So I'm going to just put it out there that I'm looking to grow and I'm looking to scale in the coming months and the coming years. And anybody that's in real estate, if you're a real estate agent, you're an owner broker, you're a leader of a team and you're conducting business in any of the states that I'm licensed in, if you think we're cut from the same cloth and we're a good fit to work together, I'm all about identifying win-win opportunities to partner because mortgage lending and real estate is, it's a marriage, you know, the two go hand in hand. So I'm just going to put so that true. out. Reach out. No, to it's me. Been talking. It's so true. And, and having a, having a good outlook makes a huge difference. And I've even, you know, I've, I've watched some entrepreneurs and I've seen, you know, and this isn't just, of course, it's not just affecting the real estate or mortgage sector. It's everybody. But what I've noticed is that a lot of people are more focused on, you know, what is, what's going to happen in the government, what's going to happen. And I, I really put laser, I do everything in my power. Yes. It's good to stay, uh, it's good to understand what's happening, but the worst thing I believe that you can do is focus solely on these external forces that we can't control. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's it's really, and I, I I give this you know give credit to Ryan Stuman, the force of average uh, is like pulling everyone down. It's basically we're doing we're in a cyclical reset. I mean, if you think about it, every every decade or so we've had some sort of a, a catastrophe, something that has shut people down. And it's all, it's so cyclical. It's going to come back around. We know that we know that that's what we're going to be experiencing, but ultimately it's just staying in there and staying in the game. So I, I everything you said, I'm totally hundred percent. I love it. Uh, one question for you being, you know, that you have the vast knowledge and the mortgage side of things. What do you see some of the, the lenders, how do you see them you know, how, are they going to help people? You think with not making payments? I so much misinformation. Um, what what have you seen from you know from your standpoint? Man, there's so much to cover on this topic, and I don't know how long you want to stay on this video, but uh, I'll go as long as you want to go because you know it's it's good stuff, and I want to I want to share some of the insight with people. So uh, there's been talk about you know freezing mortgage payments if you're a current homeowner and you have a mortgage that's outstanding. Uh, there's been talk of like deferment of those payments. So it's not like it's going to be, if anybody agrees to freeze payments and, and not require you to make your monthly housing obligation, it doesn't mean that it's free money. It doesn't mean that your loans being forgiven or anything like that. You still owe the money. The outstanding balance that was on your most recent mortgage statement is what still needs to be repaid uh, on that mortgage, but it buys you time and uh, Fannie and Freddie have been discussing how to maybe go about doing a, a six month or a 12 month deferment of payments. And it's, you know, keep your, your eyes and ears peeled for quality news. Uh, notice I said quality news. It needs to be factual. Right. You consider the source, what website, what entity, what organization is behind this news if and when they do implement a program to allow for people to, to um, you know, avoid making those monthly payments, you will be required to provide documentation of some kind. I have to think that just like going through the process of applying for a mortgage, when you were first getting the mortgage to purchase the home, when you provided pay stubs, W-2s, bank statements, maybe tax returns, that sort of thing, there's going to be some sort of vetting process to prove on paper that someone has in fact been laid off or has been furloughed or their stream of income has stopped. I think there's probably going to be requirement of proof of hardship. You can't just have, you know, the masses, everybody in the country raising their hand saying, you know, I want to dodge my mortgage payment. It, I don't think it's going to work that way. 
right? So definitely keep your eyes and ears peeled for good quality news about that. Uh, that's one thing that I want to touch on. Something else that I want to touch on specifically as it relates to mortgage lending is that the stock market and the bond market has been completely out of, out of whack. It's like a roller coaster. It's up, it's down, it's upside down, it's sideways. Every day is different. You don't know what's going to happen. Nobody has a crystal ball. And it's very easy for your average consumer or your average homeowner to say, you know, well, don't mortgage rates follow treasuries? Uh, don't mortgage rates just, just follow the 10-year U.S. Treasury bonds? And so shouldn't we be seeing lower mortgage rates than, than what I'm hearing from my loan officer or I'm seeing at my bank? Uh, you know, how come rates aren't lower? Rates are up because there's insolvency in the market. There's, there's a lack of uh, liquidity in the market, the appetite from the investor community. When I say the investor community, I'm talking about pension funds, hedge funds, insurance companies, foreign investors, government investors. The appetite for purchasing bonds has really gone haywire. And some of that has to do with not knowing where this health crisis and medical crisis is going to go. But a lot of it, too, is repayment of these loans, repayment of these mortgages, because mortgage bonds are mortgage-backed securities. It's a, it's a pool. Take, for instance, a, a pooling of 100 mortgages that were issued to primary residents, home buyers, or homeowners at a loan-to-value ratio of between 70 and 80 percent, and the average uh, credit score was, you know, 740 or higher or something. This, this 100 loans is pooled together and they create a bond, a mortgage-backed security that gets sold into the market, right? And investors are buying this safety and security. It's a fixed interest rate. It's a fixed stream of interest income that that investor is buying. And the appetite has dried up for this stuff because as rates have plummeted, you know, if you were fortunate enough to lock yourself into, you know, 3% on a 30 year fix when it was available, you know, a number of weeks ago, the, the investor community just kind of collectively, the, the momentum was building, building, building. And then they just all kind of said, Hey, no, no, not a high enough rate of return. This is not a, a strong enough rate of return over the course of 30 years, we have no appetite for buying these mortgage-backed securities. And you saw rates shoot up. I mean, there was a 48-hour stretch, uh, I think beginning of last week, where the average 30-year fixed rate jumped over 1% in two days. That's wow. insane. That is That's insane. Crazy. And in a culture and in a marketplace where we all reference like, oh, well, I was talking to my buddy, and he just locked into this rate or like my friend from work just bought a house and they got this rate. But you have to consider the context of what was happening in the market on that very business day. This stuff is so time sensitive. It's changing all the time, right? All the time. And until you're locked, you're not locked. It's just like stock prices in the stock market. It changes every single day, right? The other part too about locking into a rate, because I've seen this happen with some people, once you lock into a rate, you're kind of buying into an insurance policy. It, it's ensuring that the interest rate is not going to increase on you. But if things improve and if it goes down in the opposite direction, that does not mean that a consumer can just wave a magic wand and say, oh, yeah, yeah, that rate lock from a week ago, I want to break that and I want to go to the lower rate because there are financial implications that they don't know about. There are commitments made between lender and Fannie Mae or lender and Freddie Mac or lender and Ginnie Mae. There are contractual obligations that were made between companies behind the scenes when you chose to make that rate lock. It's not so easy to just break a lock and go down to a lower rate. And again, just to put it in a different perspective, if rates go up 
as a loan officer that's a representative of Movement Mortgage, I'm not calling my, my clients that locked a week or two ago, calling them back and saying, hey, uh, rates seem to have worsened by about a half a percent. I'm going to go ahead and break your lock and give you the higher rate. Right. Like, so it, it, it works both ways. We're in this together. And I think that as loan officers, it's, um, you know, it's, it's taxing and it's exhausting having these conversations with so many people. And so hopefully something like putting this on video that people can watch allows them to learn and listen and educate without other loan officers, including myself, having to go through the conversation over and over and over again. But we're in this together. It's a team effort. We're a service provider, right? Like I, I exist only to serve clients and I want what they want because if they don't get what they want, I'm out of business. I'm no longer a loan officer because nobody's coming to me for a loan, right? So same team, I want what's best for you. I want what's best for your finances. And I'll do everything in my power to fight for those best loan terms. But there's only so much that I can control, right? And so true. I know I'm on a soapbox here. If No, no. You know, you're good. I mean, I, I think that was on, so I want helpful. To touch on some of the specific loan programs and things that people in the marketplace are accustomed to, because I think this is really powerful information both for the consumer and for real estate agents, uh, real estate agents that are representing home sellers today and into the future are going to need to be very aware of things that are happening in the mortgage marketplace because loan programs are going to change. Guidelines are going to change. Things are getting a bit more strict. And in some instances, it's happening very, very quickly. There is new, new news coming out each and every business day. And something that I'm hearing is coming uh, relatively quickly is significant changes to government-backed lending like FHA and VA, Veterans Administration Loans for Military Veterans and Active Duty Military, as well as FHA Loans, Federal Housing Administration. This is really, really important because both FHA and VA loans, they have some of the least stringent guidelines in the entire mortgage marketplace. These loans tend to statistically be the easiest loans for people to qualify for. They have some of the lowest credit standards when it comes to credit score. And they also have some of the highest debt to income ratio thresholds for approval. And I think we're going to see changes in both of these arenas. I think that we're going to see minimum credit score requirements on these loans go up. And I think that we're likely going to see debt to income ratio requirements on these loans come down. And people that in months or years past that had been approved for these loans based on a higher DTI or a lower credit score Many of these people going into this new lending environment, many of those people that fit into that criteria are not going to satisfy guidelines. They are not going to get loan approval. Now, this is all, again, I'm going to keep asterisk. It, it's not come out yet. It is not official. This is, uh, to some extent, just a rumor. But based on the sources of this information that I'm getting it from, I think it's very, very likely that you're going to see this stuff happen in the not too distant future. And until we get the market to settle and calm and get the investor community to come back to the table and show an appetite for consumption of these mortgage backed securities, we're going to continue to see, I refer to it as the daily rate roller coaster. It's up, it's down, it's sideways, upside down. I don't know. Hey, Jeff. Do you think, I know I missed the boat a couple of weeks ago. Do you think it's going to be possible for me to refinance to a rate in the low threes? Do you think that's coming back? I don't know. I would love to say that it is. And I, I do, I do in my heart of hearts think that when things calm, I think that the going market rate, average 30 year fix, you know, top notch credit above 700 credit scores. Uh, reasonable debt to income ratios, all the things that go into qualifying for loans. I do think that the overall range is going to be somewhere in those threes. I think the number three will be in front of those going market rates. And that that's phenomenal. 
right? Like yeah. don't kick yourself because your, your rates a quarter of a percent higher than your neighbor. This is not a measuring contest. You need right. to use this health crisis as a reset for all I can do is the best I can do. I have to use a different filter. I have to look at life through a different lens. And in this positivity lens, I see that historically speaking, I'm getting a really phenomenal rate, right? Oh, yeah. Like it's not about getting the bargain basement. It's just being happy with what you have and happy with what you can get. Keep perspective. And I think so many people, and I mean, there's a lot of amazing information. So thank you for sharing that because I know there's a lot of people right now that are uncertain on so many things. And what I've been telling everyone, even our clients for that matter, potential clients, people that are uh, looking to even get into our business or this sector, I've been telling everyone, listen, double down on what is working right now. Don't stop marketing. Don't put your head in the sand because it's, it's tempting. I mean, I understand that people want to binge watch Netflix and Hey, I mean, look, i I, to decompress at the end of the day, yeah, I'll watch a little bit of television. There's nothing wrong with that, but you have to focus on, you have to focus on what you can control, I think. And that's where we don't have as much control right now. But the only thing where I feel like we can control is how we react to the situation. And I think that there's a lot of overreaction that's going on. And everyone is trying to make it political where people are pointing fingers in different directions. Guys, like this is something that's unprecedented. Uh, no one ever expected it. It was not something that we've planned for. And, you know, I'll tell you, Jeff, I mean, I feel like a horse's ass because two, three weeks ago, I said, oh, this virus, it's, it's going to blow over. I mean, well, here we are. So it was before it all happened. I think all of us are 100% we're, we're vulnerable if we allow ourselves to, to stay confined and stay in the box. And that's why, I mean, I love working with out-of-box thinkers like you, uh, somebody who is pushing and driving your business and still doing amazing things uh, with, Absolutely. And with that's movement. Oh, I was just going to add to what you're saying, like the, the beauty of today's technology in 2020 and beyond is like, look at what we're doing. We're doing a video Zoom meeting, like, you're in your house, I'm in my house, right? And right. business is, is continuing to go, right? Like yep. it, it only stops if you choose to stop, right? Because opportunity is still there. Like-minded people like you and I are connecting right now in the midst of this crisis, stuck at home. Kids can't go to daycare. They're right outside probably watching Frozen 2 right now. My wife's trying to keep them quiet so that we can do right. this video. Like, do what you can do, but do what you can control. And I think that you've, you've got smartphones, you've got internet, you've got computers, laptops. I can see your printer scanner fax behind you. Like right. you can still communicate. And at the end of the day, whether you're in real estate or you're in mortgage, we get paid to communicate. At the core of what we do, we get paid to communicate with people. That's it. And you have all of the tools to be able to communicate. You can email from your phone. You can text from your phone. You can call from your phone. You can do lots of these things like video on your phone, on a computer. Business doesn't have to stop unless you want to stop. So right. some people are choosing to sit and watch CNN, Fox News, and CNBC. And I'm doing some of that too. But the perspective that I have is I'm looking for facts. I'm looking for data. I'm a numbers nerd. That's what I love. And I'm just looking to keep my finger on the pulse of what's happening in the market so that I can go back to communicating with my business partners and my clients to educate them on what I know and what I see, right? Because that's what yep. this is all about. We're expert advisors. We're communicators. We're teachers. We're coaches in real estate and in mortgage. So we need to get that message out and share this news and share this positivity with the world. Like be a leader, be a leader. And Warren Buffett, if you've ever read books or seen that guy interviewed, Warren Buffett's investing strategy, very, very different and outside the box in comparison to the herd. Because you'll hear him say time and time again that the, the public 
and, and the, the, the overall investor community is going to choose X. And while they're going X, he's going Y. Like people are running for the exits out the building and Warren Buffett's headed in and up the stairs, right? I'm, I'm just trying to do the same thing in mortgage lending, right? Everybody that's gripped by fear, they're frozen. They're worried about it. They're worried about the crisis. They're worried about what's on the news. They want to fight with each other on Facebook and Instagram about politics and all this stuff. Yep. Opportunity is going to pass you by. You're getting pulled into nonsense that you cannot control. It's pointless. It's useless. And again, you don't want to be talking about, I just spent the last two weeks complaining about politics and the president or whatever while I'm on my deathbed. Like I just right. spent the last two weeks totally consumed by nonsense that we can't control. That's just stupid. Yeah. And it's, and it's even like, I've had family members reach out and they're concerned and I've, you know, I've done everything I can. Like, listen, look at the, you know, there's so many positives. And, you know, one of the things I'm the most grateful for every single day, I still have a roof over my head. I still have an amazing wife. I still have a great family. I have food in, you know, I have, I have food in my fridge. I have money in the bank. You know, it's, it's going to be all right. These are all temporary. They're yes, they're massive setbacks, but they're temporary setbacks and leveraging video, leveraging social media. I will tell everyone that that's tuning in. I've seen more engagement on our podcast now than ever before. I'm talking three, four, five times the engagement, more people watching, different people watching. Uh, generally, when I'm shooting videos before, there might be four or five viewers on at the same time. Now it's been double digit viewers almost the entire time. And I mean, I've even had times where, you know, there's 20 plus people that are watching just me doing a Facebook Live on my own personal page. So many people are consuming content right now. If you are a business professional of any sort, it is up to you to change the perception or the reality of the marketplace. Be the, be the light in the darkness because there's so, so much darkness out there right now. And there are a lot of people that are just pitching doom and gloom and we're all going to get through this. We're all going to get through it together. And Jeff, one last thing I want to touch on. Uh, so movement mortgage, what is the, what is the call to fame? What is it that uh, for everybody that doesn't, that's, you know, never used you guys before what do you guys do that really helps you stand out well i mean one of the things that i want to point out at the core of the company is that upwards of 50 percent of movement mortgage is owned by the movement foundation so the the owners and co-founders of movement mortgage have set it up to where the profits from closed mortgage business are being fed and reinvested in the community so that money is going to underserved youth, underserved families. Some of the work is in the United States. Some of the work is outside the United States and third world countries. But the stuff that the Movement Foundation does is super powerful. And I'm proud to be a part of the company. And I'm proud to be a part of this movement of change in the mortgage industry because it's not all about dollars. Look at this medical crisis, right? Like what? What does it matter if you have all the money in the world and you don't have your health and now you're dead? It doesn't matter. Keep it in perspective. So I love that we have the business set up to close business and transact at a really high level and compete and win in the mortgage space because Casey Crawford, the CEO, he, he's an ex-NFL athlete. He wants to win at the highest level too. And he knows that in order for our mortgage company to compete and win, We've got to have really strong technology. We've got to have really good people. We've got to have really good character. We have to take care of our team members. We have to take care of all of our community members internally to go out and love on the, the community, home buyers, um, real estate agents, builders, financial advisors, uh, attorneys, divorce attorneys, all these things. Like it's a community and it's about taking care of each other and identifying these win-win opportunities. So I don't want anybody to get it twisted that because we're so over the top lovey dovey that, that we're not great at what we do. Trust me, I'll run circles around anybody in mortgage lending. I promise you that we will close faster. You will have better communication. You will have better service. You will have a plethora of products. 
like sky's the limit, you name it, create a T-chart, put me on one side, a competitor of mine on the other. And there might be one category that, that I lose at, but the rest of the categories are going to make it to where we were just, we had that one play, one play in the Super Bowl where we were off and our cornerback gave up a touchdown, 80 yard touchdown. But outside of that, we still won the game by two or three touchdowns. So do you want to compete and do you want to win? I think that movement mortgage is set up very strategically for times like this, because we're going to come out of this stronger. We're going to learn from faults that existed in the business prior to this crisis. And we're going to improve on those things. And at the core of what we do, our people and our operations, our processing, our underwriting, our funding, our doc drawing is it's phenomenal. And so I just think the whole team top to bottom is top notch and we pride ourselves on speed. And that's, that's the claim to fame. The claim to fame is get everybody underwritten up front so that people can close on a purchase fast and furious and in a market that's hyper competitive that has a lack of inventory. You, you owe it to your, your agent partners and you owe it to your buyer clients to be able to compete and win. Because if that buyer is not successful getting that house under contract, they're devastated because they got emotionally attached to that house. And financially speaking for you as an agent and for me as a lender that, are, that stand to earn our livelihood from a commission of a closed transaction, you're not making any money. So if you're out there writing offers, you write one, five, 10, 20 offers on homes over the course of three to six months, that doesn't pay your bills. Stop losing. This is your opportunity to really evaluate who your partners are in business. Because I've heard over the years, a lot of people that are like, oh, my lender's great. They walk on water. They can do no wrong. You know, I've been working with them for a decade. I've been working for 20 years. We're close friends. Our families vacation together. I get all that. I get it. Because I'm close friends with a lot of my business partners too. And I think that there's a lot to be said for working hard and playing hard and being aligned with like-minded business folks that you can be friends with and celebrate your wins outside of the workplace together. But you also need to be able to objectively, objectively based on data, numbers, facts, stats, who's the best? Who's the best? for me and my clients to partner with so that we can compete and win. And this is business that the stuff outside of business, that's when you can let your hair down. That's when you can, you know, go to the ball games and, and do the family vacations together and all that stuff. But in the trenches, in the midst of your work day, there are winners and there are losers. You want to win? I want to, I want to hear from you. Yeah. I love that. And it's, it is very true because some of us get, we don't know what we don't know. We get so caught up in who it is that we're working with because we break bread with them. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I, I 100% see value in loyalty. I get it. And, but also you have to consider all the options that are out there. You can't be closed. You, you, this, this is now more time than ever to be open-minded. I, and I think that everybody owes it to themselves. And when I've talked to you about the speed of your process, how quickly you guys close deals, and I'm going to give a shout out about for one of your team members. I hope that's all right. But Leanne yeah. is phenomenal. Uh, and I mean, my entire team, you know, the, the few people I have that are in interaction with, they're like, oh my gosh, I love her. She's amazing. Uh, she's, you know, she's, she's constantly at the top of her game. And I do believe 100% that who you surround yourself with, especially during times like this, makes a huge difference. But everybody that's watching, you owe it to yourself to remain open-minded about where you're going, who you're gonna go there with, because the change of the scope of the economy and where things are at, everything now has evolved. And like you said earlier with Warren Buffett, when, when everyone is doing, you know, X, he's doing Y. And that was where he made his, his fortunes. I mean, he was making money before, but he was capitalizing. And when I say capitalizing, I don't mean because this is a very serious time and it's horrible for people, but there are areas that you can still capitalize, be in business, be ethical, do things the right way, 
and you know lead from a place of love and admiration and not lead with just money in mind first and i think that this fear is driving everybody to to start closing down and one of the best one of the, actually the best books i ever read and it's the funniest books i thought about it the other the other night i just had this clarity on it i think the guy's name is james al Buchter, and it's the choose yourself guide to wealth and success and it's a super short read it's it's a little dense and it's not the most fun read but it's very he breaks it down to where it's it's un, you can understand it enough that if money's not circulating and cash isn't flowing from one from one hand to another the economy does shut down it's just where it goes so let's not let's not fund that demise let's stay on in front of this let's just adjust and use a different medium because people still need to sell homes people still need to refinance People still need, and actually, it's it's funny because I was looking just the other week, Jeff. To, I was looking at refinancing, and I'm like, I, I'm still on, I'm still looking at it. But with what I have, as far as, and of course, I'd call you. Uh, but what I have right now is I have like a low three percent rate, and I'm like, well, I don't plan on staying in the house I have forever. I'm going to probably move within the next couple of years, so I'd have to look and see what, how it would work, how it would all break down, we'll uh, and if it wouldn't. We can talk about it, it outside of this. Yes, absolutely. But uh, I, I really, I want to thank you for jumping on. Now, everyone that's watching, if they want to get a hold of you, if they want to uh, connect, what's the best site? How, how do they get in touch? Mm -hmm. I think uh, probably the best place to go would be blog.mortgagefromjeff.com. And that's where I've got uh, your blog. And uh, all my contact information is there. And the big Perfect. thing for me is that mortgage lending in today's world, it's all virtual. You know, the, the only human being boots on the ground in that geographic location, the only thing that matters is that there are good quality appraisers that are responsive, that do a job with speed, that do a job with accuracy. And I feel like we do as good a job as anyone putting good quality appraisers on our approved lists that go into our appraisal management company choices. And as long as you have that, the quality appraisers on the panel, your loan officer can be anywhere. Do your vetting and do your due diligence and make sure that you're working with somebody that is objectively the best of the best. But once you've established that, that trust and that rapport, and you know that they can deliver like my team can deliver. If I had internet access and cell phone reception, I could close business from the moon. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. And I'd still run circles around my competition from the moon because the only person I'm relying on is the appraiser. That's the human being that's got to be local. So don't, don't get it yeah. twisted that, you know, oh, we need to work with a local lender. No, I'll, I'll close and you know, a half or a third the time of the local lender. It doesn't matter. I love it. Well, I, I appreciate you jumping on. I, you gave a lot of amazing value. And I think that anyone who watches live or was, is going to watch the replay is going to really gain some massive value from your, uh, from your insight. And guys, again, for everybody, if you missed the site with Jeff, I did post it in the comments. Uh, but it is uh, blog.mortgagefromjeff.com. And guys, give Jeff a shot. His team is amazing. Uh, they are very, very fast. They do great work. They're very communicative. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's funny because I've sent you guys some emails at some outlandish times of the day in the night. And I'm sitting there like, How? they checked that and got back to me very, very quickly. And I, I'm not even, we're not even working on mortgages yet. So, I mean, it's that in itself and we're, and we're in a different because, time zone aren't we yes we are very oh, much so in different in three, you're three hours right yep yep and not and exactly you still, I, you still get rapid fire response like in an instant you hear from us right yes you get paid to communicate that's what we do we communicate it just doesn't yep. matter where we're geographically doesn't matter as long as we're keeping the same waking hours as you and the working yep. hours then it doesn't matter so true. And I, I think you guys have been phenomenal. I'm excited to continue to grow with you and, uh, and get you guys, you know, and, and work together to really just help 
give back to our uh, to our community and, and help people in these tough times. So I really I appreciate you again jumping on and uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. And uh, Jeff, any closing thoughts that you have? Last little bit, I'll throw out some stats for the real estate agents out there for you know people that are hearing that doom and gloom. We had Barry Habib from MBS Highway. Uh, many people in mortgage and real estate know Barry Habib. He's very well respected. He's always in tune with the market. And what he shared with the movement mortgage loan officers privately just a few days ago was some of the housing stats headed into this medical crisis. The housing market was at home affordability, the best that it's ever been in like the last 13 years. It was on wow. par with the best home affordability of the last 13 years. A couple of the key data points that I latched onto were um, costs to rent ratio and costs to replacement ratio, also known as price to rent ratio and price to replacement ratio. The price of a home as compared to rent is almost on par with the average from the last 40 years. We're currently sitting at the average price of a home in America is about 17 times its annual rent. And over the last 40 years, that average is 16.2. Very, very close, okay? So, and for the next one for price to replacement ratio, so the average price of a home is about 1.59 times the cost to replace that home, the cost of materials to rebuild that home. And the average price to replacement ratio over the last 40 years is 1.58. 1.58, 1.59, those are basically the same numbers, right? Two very key data points, facts, stats, not, not any of the doom and gloom, like, my feelings are involved. My emotions are involved. Just looking at the numbers as we headed into this medical crisis, the housing market was very strong. And I don't suspect that we're going to see a ton of, you know, foreclosures and short sales and all this stuff because some of the other stats, 40% of the homes in America are owned free and clear. 40% of the homes are owned free and clear. And of the other 60% of the homes that are mortgaged, the average, the median loan to value ratio is under 50%. Wow. So wrap your head around that. 40% own their homes free and clear. 60% that have mortgages on their properties are under 50% loan to value ratio. What this means is if you are a homeowner that is fortunate enough to still have your job and still be making money, and if you can qualify for refinancing, you can use the equity in your home to consolidate higher interest rate debt. That would be a very savvy move to try and get your monthly expenditures down and your interest expense down because that will help you and your family's budget. And if someone in the worst of circumstances, in the very worst of circumstances, if they're not going to be able to keep up on payments and for some reason they can't hang on to their home, which I think they will be able to because of relief from housing payments and things like that. If they had to sell their house, they can put a sign in the yard and work with a realtor like you, Matt, because they have equity in their home. They're not just going to give it up or give it away or go into right. default and let their house be foreclosed on. There's too much equity in the property that they own. So in the very worst of circumstances, if they feel like they're backed into a corner, find a knowledgeable and trustworthy real estate agent advocate in your area. And if you're thinking of selling, have that conversation, have a virtual Zoom meeting and talk about your options and get yourself educated because there's too much equity based on those stats. There's just too much equity in homes to just give it away. So you have options. The sky is not falling. I promise you. The sun is shining. Oh, I lost you. There we go. I got you now. You couldn't have given any better advice to close things out. Guys, the sky is not falling. The sun will come up tomorrow. 
and it's going to, you know, we're going to go to darkness. We're going to go to sun. It's all going to continue to go cyclical, but we're going to get out of this. We're going to work through it together. Keep investing in yourself. Take the time now to invest in your education. Take the time now to invest in, in looking at your business and ultimately double down on marketing. Be open-minded about who you're working with. Jeff, thank you again for jumping on. This was amazing. I know uh, we've had a ton of engagement. People are loving what you're saying. Guys, again, uh, just, oh, I have lost your audio for some reason. Hopefully it's, but um, that's okay. It was a good time. Oh, there we go. Now I hear you. But shameless, shameless plug again for Jeff, guys, because I want Jeff to blow things up and help you blow things up in your business. Uh, blog.mortgagefromjeff.com. As you guys can see, it's in the comments. Uh, have an amazing day, and uh, we'll see you guys next week, same time, same place. Thanks again, Jeff. See ya. Appreciate you, Matt. Thank you.